Hello and welcome to the programme. Well, it's being called the Brexit election and when the leaders of the UK's two main political parties came face to face for the first time tonight in a televised debate, the question of how and when this hugely divisive issue will be done was on the minds of voters. The hour-long face-off between Prime Minister Boris Johnson and opposition leader Jeremy Corbyn was testy at times with each taking pot shots at each other over issues including the National Health Service, climate change, change and how important trust in a leader is. But it was Brexit that saw them trade the most barbs. Mr Johnson defended his deal saying it was oven ready and delivered what the British people want, while Jeremy Corbyn said he would renegotiate a new deal with the EU and put the choice back to the British public in a referendum. It delivers everything that we wanted from Brexit. Our whole country comes out entire and perfect, England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland together. And there is a sharp distinction between what we are proposing, getting Brexit done, unleashing the potential of this country, and next year, dither and delay, with another referendum on the EU, when Jeremy Corbyn, uh, Mr Corbyn, cannot tell us which side he would campaign on okay, in that you, referendum. Okay, thank you, Mr Johnson. You're... Within three months, negotiate a credible leave option with the European Union, and within six months, put that to a referendum of the British people to decide between that option of leaving whilst protecting jobs and trade and the Good Friday Agreement with Europe, or remaining as full members of the European Union. That will be the choice put before the British people. And for more on that debate, I'm joined now by correspondent Vincent McAvinney. Well, good evening to you, Vinnie. Well, as we were saying there, well, Brexit was the main topic of the debate. Uh, tell us, what stood out for you? Good evening, Isabel, from the spin room here in Manchester. Well, there wasn't really any killer blows or, or big moves by the leaders tonight. No big policies announced. Boris Johnson trying to get everything back to the issue of Brexit. Jeremy Corbyn trying his best to talk about the NHS, talking about a Trump trade deal. And the polling has just come out in a snap poll, which says that 51% thought that Boris Johnson won and 49% Jeremy Corbyn won. So it seems to be a bit of a tie. Now, Boris Johnson Johnson saying that he would end the national misery and said Labour only offered division in deadlock. Jeremy Corbyn saying he could get Brexit sorted by giving people a final say. So really, in this first debate, there was not any sort of big breakout moment from these two leaders. But I'm joined now by one MP, Tom Brake, who is the Liberal Democrats uh, foreign affairs spokesperson. Tom, your party leader, she's on the screen right now. She's in the follow up programme, but she wasn't on the debate stage tonight. How disappointing was that for you? you? Well, that was highly disappointing. Uh, that was a, uh, a loss for the 16 million people who voted to remain three and a half years ago, who did not have a, a champion for them in that debate between Boris Johnson and Jeremy Corbyn, both of whom are Brexiters. And what did you make of the content of the debate tonight? Boris Johnson repeatedly talking Brexit, Jeremy Corbyn trying to get away from that. Well, I think Jeremy Corbyn was not able to answer the question about whether he would campaign for his own Brexit or for remain in the referendum that he says he'd offer the country. And Boris Johnson was not able to explain uh, how he would uh, get rid of the damage associated with Brexit and the damage it would do to our economy. And then the subsequent five, six or seven years of negotiations that would be required to establish a new relationship with the EU and how that would bog us down for many more years to come on the subject of Brexit. Brexit. And the polling uh, after this debate showed that the nation was pretty much split down the middle on who won. Uh, do you think that we are heading in this election towards another hung parliament? Is there anything in the next three weeks that could really change this election course? Well, clearly I hope so. And we are launching our manifesto tomorrow, so, so setting out our stall. What we want to make very clear is that if people want to back a party that is a Remain party, fundamentally committed, they should vote Liberal Democrat. And in many parts of the country, the best way of stopping Boris Johnson getting majority is to vote Liberal Democrat. From what you heard from Jeremy Corbyn tonight, he might be someone in a couple of weeks' time that you could be having negotiations with for a coalition. What would be your red lines? Because your position is to cancel uh, the Article 50, the process that we leave the European Union. He wants a second referendum. Could you get behind that position of a second referendum? Well, we've made it very clear that uh, two of our red lines is that we won't do a deal with either Boris Johnson or indeed Jeremy Corbyn. So there will be no coalition with Jeremy Corbyn.
And these debates, I mean, 10 years ago, Nick Clegg sort of really broke into the mainstream conscience with his debate, the I agree with Nick statement becoming a bit of a catchphrase, but you, didn't, you weren't able to make the kind of ground that you needed after this. Jo Swinson is trying her best now on this follow-up program. But do you think the other broadcasters should allow you onto that stage to widen out the views? Well, absolutely. Why on earth have a debate, a two-way contest, as we've just seen, between two leaders who fundamentally want the same thing, Brexit? Brexit is the most significant issue in this campaign. There should have been someone representing the views of 16 million people. There wasn't in that debate. And you mentioned that tomorrow you are launching your manifesto. What is it that you hope that people see because you're struggling to get the airtime? Is there anything in it that you think is going to win people around? Well, I think the first thing we want it will, will be um, people to see that this is a manifesto which is deliverable financially because what we've seen so far, both from Labour and indeed from the Conservatives, are some fantastical promises being made about money being splurged and spent all over the place but without actually explaining how it's going to be paid for. We will have a costed manifesto and it will make it very clear how we will pay for the investment in the health service, £35 billion over a five-year period. In, the, in our schools, £10 billion over a five-year period. It will all be set out in that manifesto how it is uh, going to be paid for because I think politicians have to be honest to people that there's no such thing as a free lunch when it comes to party policies. Tom Brake, thank you very much. Well, Isabel, I can tell you I've been speaking to some of the audience members here tonight, those who got to ask questions, and many of them saying they were pleased to not hear just an hour of Brexit talk. They enjoyed hearing about the other issues, and we'll see in the other debates coming up over the next couple of weeks whether or not there is more of a focus on those. Okay, so some Brexit fatigue at the debates as well. Well, Vincent McAvinney for us there, thanks so much.